When evaluating trig functions of angles that we're not familiar with, it's helpful to compare the angles to something that we are familiar with. For instance, in part b, we notice that 5 pi over 12, if we double it, turns into 5 pi over 6. And 5 pi over 6 is an angle that we're familiar with. So in other words, I multiplied it by 2. If multiplying by 2 brings us one way, then dividing by 2, in other words, 1 half, brings us the other way. So if we call this angle theta, then this is 1 half theta, or theta over 2. So what we're really trying to find is cosine of theta over 2. And cosine of theta over 2 has a formula that we can use. It looks like plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. And since we know theta on the unit circle and we can find its values, we can plug those numbers into this cosine of theta. Well, first of all, what is cosine of 5 pi over 6? Let's take a look at a unit circle. I would draw a triangle up like this and find the x and y values. The x value is a negative square root of 3 over 2, and the y value is a positive 1 half. Now, we actually only need that x value because all we care about is the cosine. Our numbers are then going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 plus a negative square root of 3 over 2, all divided by 2. Now, this fraction inside the square root can be simplified by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2. Additionally, I can treat the addition by a negative number the same as subtraction. And I'll end up with something like plus or minus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 4. And if I want to go the extra mile, maybe I could take the square root of the denominator since it's a perfect square. I'll end up with the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 2. Now, I still have this plus or minus here, however. I have to figure out, is it plus or is it minus? And I know what quadrant theta is in. That's in the second quadrant. But now we have to figure out the quadrant theta over 2, our actual angle is in. That way we can figure out whether it should be positive or negative. Now, I find it helpful to write, write the axes endpoints as divided by 12. Um, so this would be 0 pi over 12. This would be 6 pi over 12. This would be 12 pi over 12. And this would be 18 pi over 12. I notice that 5 pi over 12 would lie firmly between 0 pi over 12 and 6 pi over 12. And since that's in the first quadrant, and co cosines have a, are positive in the first quadrant, our cosine should be positive. And thus our answer should be the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3, all over 2.